Sassy, Moody, Nasty. What's up everyone? It's your girl Ryan back for another video. Today I'm doing something pretty exciting, trying to do something a little different, trying to get some variety on my channel and whatnot. So today I'm gonna do something that I'm calling splurge versus steal. I feel like there's a lot of time on YouTube and on Instagram and um, just on social media in general where beauty influencers or just Instagram models or things like that will try to make you feel like you need to go being at Sephora and buying the highest possible foundation, the highest possible lashes. I found ways to where there's some things that I will splurge on for sure and there's some things I'm like I can get that for two dollars at the beauty supply. Not that big a deal to me and I know there's a lot of people out there like that too. So I'm here to help you. I don't have the biggest collection of makeup yet. Maybe one day it will be bigger as I move along in my life, get a little bit more change in my pocket and have a little bit more disposable change to be, you know, like trying new things right now. But I think I have a pretty solid collection right now. I'm gonna be looking in my makeup organizer and seeing what things that I splurge on, what things could I have gotten for a little cheaper and what things were an absolute steal. Face makeup, concealers, eyes, eyelashes, pretty much anything I can think of. And I'm also gonna be putting the prices down too as I go. And I may also put them up on the screen so you can really see what I'm talking about. I don't have everything that I am mentioning because some things that I may have used in the past and just haven't re-upped, but it doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't a bad product. It doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't a steal and, or maybe it was a splurge and I just don't really have it right now. So let's just jump right into it. And I have my notes so I don't miss anything, any price points, any pros and cons. I did make a list of some pros and cons on some of the products as well, just so you know, if you even wanna spend your money on something like that, if it's not what you're looking for. So first things first, I'm gonna do concealers and foundations. First thing's gonna be a splurge. Now I personally don't mind splurging on foundations and concealers just because it is the base of your face. It is what you stack everything else on, so you really want to make sure that you're getting the coverage you want, the finish you want. You make sure that it's your color, make sure that it's blending. I don't want to say that the more expensive it is, the better it is, but if you want to splurge on something, I would definitely recommend splurging on concealer and foundation. But that's not to say that you can't find good things drugstore either. That's just my recommendation and what works for me. So we're going to start with one of my holy grails and that is the MAC Studio Fix Soft Matte Foundation Stick. I absolutely love this foundation. I started with MAC using their concealers and their pressed powders and then I moved on to this foundation stick. So I wrote that the MAC Studio Fix Soft Matte Foundation to start. This is $33. Both of these were $33 and I bought them together because I needed two colors for my face to mix them in. So together it was a little bit over $66. Total. It has a buildable coverage, a creamy formula. It also has, because it's a stick, I think there's more control on where you put it. The con of this foundation is that I'm not sure if the shade range helps those with deeper skin tones. The deepest one that I saw of this foundation was NW60, which is Neutral Warm 60, which is really actually like a neutral cool shade. So if you're interested in that, I will look into that. Steel version of that foundation would be the Maybelline Fit Me Shine Free and Balance Foundation for Combination Skin. This is $8.99. Pros of this foundation is that it is has a buildable coverage. I think $8.99 is pretty affordable drugstore brand for a foundation. It caters to oily and combination skin because of the soft matte finish. The only con that I have for this is that it may not cater to all undertones. I found myself when I was looking for the Maybelline Fit Me foundation in my color, in my actual skin tone color, it wasn't really catering to my skin tone. Regardless, this is $8.99. This is steel. So next, I'm going to be talking about a tinted moisturizer that I like, and I don't have it with me, so I'm going to just put a picture of it right here. And that's going to be the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Oil-Free Natural Skin Perfector. The pros of this would be that it caters to oily skin, it has a light buildable coverage, has SPF. The only con is I'm not sure of the shade range, but it seems like they may have shades that cater to deeper skin tone. This 
is about $50. But I did enjoy the product a lot and I definitely will buy it. The steal for the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer for me would be the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Skin Blurring Tint. This is $29.50. And I know some people may think that, okay, $29.50 is still not very cheap. It's not a drugstore. And you're right, it's not. I haven't tried any other tinted moisturizers. The Laura Mercier was the first one that I tried. This is the second one that I tried. So to me, between the $50 one and the $29.50, this is a steal. Pros of this, it's light, it has a light buildable coverage, it has a lightweight formula. The two cons that I have for this is that to me it wasn't as hydrating as I felt like people were making it out to be. I feel like it's not as hydrating when it's actually on your skin than it appears to be in advertisements and things. The Laura Mercier skin tint, tinting moisturizer, excuse me, is a lot more moisturizing, not moisturizing, is a lot more hydrating and it has SPF. This one does not have SPF. Another con that I had for this was that it was really hard to find my shade. I feel like it was supposed to be like, because they're sheer, 25 shades is enough to find your shade. This is in 13 and I went back and forth between 12, 13, 14, and 15. 14 and 15 were just too dark for me. 12 and 13, 12 ended up being a little bit too yellow for me, but 13 seems to, to me on my skin when I tried, especially on my forehead because it's a different color than the rest of my skin, it was just seeming like, it just makes me look ashy and it kind of just makes me feel like I have a mask on. It does work for a lot of people. To me, it just wasn't doing what I thought it was going to be doing because I'm comparing it to the Laura Mercier. Next up is concealers. I'm going to go back to MAC and start with the MAC Studio Finish Concealers with SPF 35. Love these concealers. I absolutely love these concealers. The NC45 is basically my OG. This is my OG MAC. The first MAC product that I ever bought and used and I absolutely fell in love. I used to use this on my face all around and just blended in with the beauty blender and that would be my foundation. Pros, it is a full coverage concealer. It's blendable and it has SPF 35, which is like five more than the recommended SPF. I don't have any cons for this concealer. The price is $24. Yes, so this is a splurge. This is a splurge, but this is a splurge I'm willing to make completely. The Fenty Beauty Matchstick. This is what I use for my concealer when I'm not using the MAC. Pros of this is that it has a buttery consistency. It blends effortlessly. I used it today as just a little bit of an eye brightener under my eyes. This is also a splurge. This costs more than one of the MAC concealers and the MAC concealers has SPF. Just saying. If I had to splurge on one, you would know which one I'm, I'm splurging on. I honestly sped up a little bit before and forgot to talk about primers. The one that I have with me today is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. It comes in many formulas. It comes in mattifying. This is the Poreless Putty Primer, but it also comes in acne fighting. It comes in mattifying. It comes in luminous. A lot of different formulas. My pros for this is that it comes in many formulas has a thick consistency and a good grip. And when I say thick, I don't necessarily mean thick. It has like that kind of consistency. So it kind of just feels like a moisturizer going on your skin. This primer is $9. Another primer that I have used and that I liked was the NYX Pore Filler Blurring Face Primer. And I will put a picture here. This primer is $14. It's very, it's much more of like a gel consistency as opposed to the putty primer. My cons would be it may leave an oil slick on your skin if you have oily skin like I do. Between the two of them, it's definitely the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer for me, especially if you have oily skin. It has a better grip on it, it gives you a nice seamless finish, and it's cheaper. Moving on to powders and blushes, we're going to start with setting powder. The one I'm currently using now is the Wet n Wild, and you can't see it because I've been using it for so long, it's just rubbed off. But this is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Setting Powder, and this is in the color Banana. This is $5.99, a steal. It's good for setting, it's brightening, and it doesn't give you any kind of cakey finish and whatnot. I put this on today, so as you can see, I'm not really super oily and I put it under my eyes and on my nose for that brightening effect. 
$5.99. Steel. The Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Retouch Setting Powder, and I will put the picture here. To me, in terms of quality, the only difference between the Fenty Beauty Setting Powder and the Wet n Wild Setting Powder is the price and the smell. So while you can get the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Setting Powder for $5.99, the Fenty Beauty Setting Powder is $32. If something works and you don't have to spend that much money on it, don't. At that, main, at that, at that point, it's just a brand thing. $5.99, $32. You make the choice. The only bronzer that I have used that has been marketed as a bronzer that I bought has been the Fenty Beauty Sunstalker bronzer. This was the first bronzer that I ever bought and I just really liked it. I really enjoy it. I haven't really tried too many more. So I just keep it going with this. I like it. I like the product. That's something I'll say. If I really do like the product, I'll buy it again. This is a new one. This is a new one that I just purchased not too long ago. When I tell you that I, the one that I had before, I kept for so long, the color changed. The color changed. You can see this is a very light, like lighter than chocolate, very warm brown color for my bronzer. And before it was the same color and i kept it forever and it was it became like a, a, a milk chocolate color and i was using that on my face because i did not want to get another one but i broke down and just bought another one because i like the product this is 30 dollars, so absolutely a splurge i i 100 percent know that there are way more bronzers out there that cost absolutely less than 30 dollars. i just have never tried it before so i'm not even going to mention one because i haven't i haven't I haven't tried it. I, would, I wouldn't know and I don't want to give you any information that I don't know. Definitely a splurge though. The most expensive blush that I've ever bought was this blush from Flesh Beauty and this is in the color Caress. This is $16.99. I was going to say to check this out but they do not sell this in stores anymore. The only places that you can get it is through online through eBay or Bulk Apothecary because Ulta dropped the company. My steal would be my Maybelline Fit Me Blush in Wine. This blush is $5.99 and I just really feel like it really gives that nice pink pop of color. And they have a lot of different shades too. This is just the one that I have been using. Looks like that. I think that pink is, this kind of pink is my color. So it really just gives me that little pop of color. And to me, blush is blush. Blush you do not have to spend a whole bunch of, of money on as long as it's giving you a little bit of that color in your cheeks and whatnot. And I'm sure there's some things that I didn't say that I could have said. I just didn't want to make this video extra super long. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Hope to see y'all next time. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at the Ellen Empress underscore. Let me know what you guys want to see. And keep sharing the videos and keep watching. And I'm really loving the support that I'm getting. And I'm hoping to get some more soon. Absolutely love you guys. Thank you so much.